Hi, my name is Ayman, a PhD student at FCT Nova University. I am also an early stage researcher at the Team Up 5G project, which has a partnership with the Telecommunication Institute in Lisbon. Team Up 5G project has received funding from European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program under the Maria Correa project number 813391. Today I'm going to talk about the residual self-interference characterization in full duplex communication systems. The outlines of my presentation are as follows. First, I will make a brief introduction about full duplex communication systems. Then I will identify and explain what does self-interference mean. I will go through a block diagram to show an in-band full duplex communication system and discussing the most popular residual self-interference reduction methods. Next, I am going to demonstrate the importance of characterizing the residual self-interference power in in-band full duplex communication systems. After that, I will show the mathematical steps we perform for successfully characterizing the residual self-interference power. In particular, two approaches are adopted, the wells setter weight approximation and the alpha mu approximation. Both approximations are evaluated and compared through simulation. Finally, we conclude. In telecommunication systems, duplexing means that both ends of communication process can send and receive signals simultaneously which can be referred as full duplex communication. On the other hand, half duplex communication is a bidirectional communication, but signals can only flow in one direction at a time. For instance, the transmission and reception are separated in frequency in FDD systems, separated in time using TDD systems. However, they share the same resource unit in full duplex communication which obviously double the spectral efficiency. The key challenge when designing in-band full duplex communication systems is to minimize the residual self-interference. So what is residual self-interference? The shown system represents an in-band full duplex communication system. It consists of two nodes, where each node is equipped with two antennas for transmission and reception. Therefore, node one may transmit the signal XS1 in the blue color on the transmitted antenna. At the same time, it can receive the signal XS2 represented in a red color, which is transmitted by node 2. The major problem here is that node 1 listens accidentally to its own transmitted signal at the receiving antenna. XS1 in this situation becomes a self interference signal, making node 1 unable to decode the desired signal XS2. The self-interference can be mitigated depending on the prior knowledge of the transmitted signal by simply canceling it from the whole received signal. However, the signal between the transmitted and received antennas is propagated through a random channel. Consequently, inaccurate channel estimates will result in an increased level of self-interference. The remaining signal after the suppression of the self-interference signal is referred as a residual self-interference. From this point of view, this work aims to characterize the residual self-interference power in real channel scenarios, where we have considered multi-tab delay feeding channels. The reduction of residual self-interference can be done using passive methods, which mainly depends on the physical characteristics of the antennas like spatial separation, or active methods, which depends on prior knowledge of the interface signal. In this work, we consider the active analog canceller at the angular carrier frequency. We consider the following example to show the suppression level of each reduction method. For instance, femtocell based station transmits a 21 dB amp hour. The passive methods can suppress 15 dB. Active analog suppress up to 50, and active digital up to 30 dB, resulting in minus 74 dB amp hour which is still 26 dB up the noisy floor. This in turn motivates more research on optimizing the current reduction methods or exploring new ones. Due to the difficulty of mathematical modeling process, the statistical characterization of the residual self-interference has received limited attention. Usually, the virus channel and the self-interference are jointly estimated by exploiting non-pilot symbols and the statistics of the residual self-interference. However, 
The simulation results show that the distribution of the residual self-interference is not symmetric. Consequently, the first and second moments are not sufficient to accurately characterize the residual self-interference. Therefore, such characterization could enrich the joint estimation process by providing high-order statistics. If the self-interference signal experiences a multi-tap fading channel, the gain and phase of each tap have to be estimated and injected in the cancellation loop. The system also considers RF and hardware impairments at the transmitter and receiver chains given by QT and QR respectively, as shown in the figure. The self-interference signal is given by Y residual of T. After performing some mathematical operations, the power of the residual self-interference signal is given by P residual. This expression indicates that the residual self-interference power is a function of the self-interference signal power and the hardware and RF impairments power, the channel taps power, and the power due to estimation errors. For sake of characterizing the residual self-interference signal power, we found the distribution of the random variable S representing the self-interference signal power in addition to RF and hardware impairments power, and the random variable H representing the fading tabs power in addition to estimation errors, given that S and H are independent random variables. Given that the self-interference and the distortion signals are circularly symmetric complex random signals, then S can be represented by a gamma distribution. On the other hand, assuming that each fading tab is a Reichian distributed, then each fading tab can be described by a gamma distribution as well. Therefore, the distribution of the residual self-interference signal power can be seen as a product between a gamma random variable given by S and the sum of non-identically distributed gamma random variables, which is obviously depicted by the following diagram. We were able to solve this problem using two different approaches, Wells setter with approximation and alpha mu approximation. By definition, the summation of gamma random variables holding the same scale parameters has a closed form solution. However, there is no obvious solution when the scale parameters are different. To solve this problem, we use the Wells setter with method to approximate the summation. According to the Wells setter with method, the sum of independent, non identically distributed gamma random variables can be approximated by another gamma random variable by finding the equivalent shape and the scale parameters for all random variables. In the following diagram, we can see that the problem becomes a multiplication between two gamma random variables, which could be solved by a classical product density function yielding the PDF as shown here. Alpha mu distribution have been used to approximate the sum of independent non identically distributed gamma random variables in several works. Its PDF is defined as FPY residual of Z. In order to compute this PDF, the parameters alpha, mu, and r hat have to be estimated. A three equation system is defined for the estimation process. Given that S and H are independent, then the high order moments of P can be computed by the multiplication of the moments of S and H individually. The high order of moments are given by the expectation of s to the power n, while the high order moments of h are given by the expectation of h to the power n. The evaluation of the proposed model has been done through the comparison of the Monte Carlo simulation with the numerical results, considering two scenarios. In the first scenario, we consider a low uncertainty of the fading tabs and estimation errors. Up to six tabs were simulated and compared with the theoretical results. According to the simulated CDFs shown in the figure, the similarity comparison between the simulated data and the proposed approaches indicates a high accuracy of both well setter width and alpha mu approximations. On the other hand, both approximations exhibit inaccurate performance at particular regions of the domain when the dynamics of tabs and estimation errors are significantly high, as depicted in the following figure. 
This is due to the fact that the higher uncertainty of fading tabs and estimation errors leads to the big variation in the scale parameters of gamma distributions. In this presentation, we have derived the closed form approximations for the PDF and the CDF of the residual self-interference power in multi-tab fading channels using two approximations, well set with approximation and alpha mu approximation. Both approximations are precise when the variation in tabs parameters and estimation errors are relatively small. However, both approximations are comparatively inaccurate when we consider high dynamics in fading tabs and estimation errors.